<laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so uh, no, I hope to uh, avoid that kind of situation mm. in a family. Okay. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how financial aid works? Financial aid is, uh, I liken it to how Social Security is. It's assistance from the government. Hopefully you're not planning to live on your Social Security when you retire. And likewise here, hopefully you don't think financial aid is going to pay for all of college, unless, unless that is you're a very, very low income family. Mm -hmm. And even then, it may not pay for all colleges. So, um, but financial aid is there to level the playing field. Its idea is that a child should be able, a, ch a child should be able to go to, to college and get a higher education, you know, even if, even if the family can't afford it. The disadvantage for us here in California is that this is a federal system nationwide and um, financial aid is, is, is very dependent on the amount of income. The amount of income we have in California is very high compared to the rest of the country because of our high mortgages, house prices and so on. Yeah, we have a high cost of living. High here. cost of living. Mm -hmm. So what this means is that um, you know, the family with an equivalent lifestyle in you know, mid-America will get financial aid. The family with no better lifestyle here will apparently earn too much and not get that financial aid. So is there any sort of a regional adjustment for this stuff or is it pretty much like across the board uh, based on... Well, California, California has what they call cow grants. Yes. Um, and if you can get a cow grant, then, then that would seek to redress that balance a little bit. Now the cow grant is provided by the state of California? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So is the fan financial aid then is principally what we're talking about right now. These are governmental uh, uh, provided, mm -hmm. and then, but sometimes I guess the, a university will actually kick in from their, like you said, from their endowment or whatever, if they have a particular desire for a student, like a great football player or something like That's that. That's it. Yes, I mean, <laughs> that, that is probably the the easiest example of it. An athletic scholarship. Uh -huh. They want that player money is available right? okay. because it comes back to that reputation right mm -hmm. if they're in if they're you know got a great football team then it helps that reputation just makes life nice so. if stanford's doing well mm -hmm. then they attract more people so they can come and cheer the team on right so i so i so uh, an analogy for the financial aid would be it's like the deductible in an insurance situation um actually what happens is that the the government will work out how much it thinks the family can pay, mm -hmm. which is always more than the family thinks it of can Of course. <laughs> and that's like the deductible in an insurance. Once you pay that, the financial aid is supposed to kick in and, and make any additional cost, um, you know, cover any additional cost. So let's, let's take the example of uh, a UC. So let's say the family is supposed to pay 20000 and the UC costs 28, then financial aid should cover the other eight. However, if the, the student gets an offer from uh, Stanford and Stanford's at 50,000, um, then, then that financial aid expands to cover the gap between the 20,000 and the 50,000. Wow. The, the difficulty, and the thing that people don't realize, I think, is it's not the amount that is necessarily the most important thing, it's the type of financial aid. Because what unfortunately happens is a lot of financial aid turns out to be loans. Oh, and then you've got to pay those back. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes parents look at this and say, this, this is financial aid. This is, uh, <laughs> this is a loan, a loan at, a parent loan at 8.25%. You know, I can get better than this with a home equity loan or something mm -hmm. like that. So, yeah. so you know, parent loans are used often uh, just to sort of pad out the financial aid and are not as useful to the family as, the, as they might think. Yeah. Why should a family submit a, a free application for student aid? And I guess that's called a FAFSA form? Mm -hmm. The FAFSA form is the form to file um, to, get you, to get you first into the, that financial aid office at the, the college or university. You can imagine that these are very busy offices and they're very computer dependent. Uh, one of the reasons they're very busy, of course, is over the last year, a lot of people, a lot of parents and families have become unemployed. 
uh, and that's a special case, and this has put a big workload on, on the financial aid offices. Right. So, but they're very computer dependent. How does your record get into that financial aid office computer? It gets in there through the FAFSA. The FAFSA, although you're, you're making a, a submission to the Department of Education, the Department of Education sends it to all of the colleges. Um, now the colleges have it, you're in their, financial, you're in their computer, now they can work with you. Mm -hmm. So that's the primary reason for, for submitting the FAFSA, because every student will get some aid. They will get a, a, a federal student loan, mm -hmm. uh, called the Stafford loan. Mm -hmm. The, f the uh, financial aid system is an insurance policy. If you do become unemployed, if you do have a, a serious medical issues, something, something strange like that, or you have multiple kids in college, then even if you didn't qualify for financial aid in the first year, by the second, third, or fourth year, you may, you may, be, you may be very uh, Eligible. thankful that, mm -hmm. that, uh, that you got into that system and are able to get financial aid. Okay, so you want to get in right from the get-go. Yeah, you want to get in yeah. from the get-go, you know, get used to that system. Um, like I say, uh, and, then, and then the third reason for, for being in, in the computer at the financial aid office, if they have money to give out, remember we talked about the, the money that's available at the college from the endowment funds mm -hmm. to attract you know, that top quarter of the student population um, through, through giving them you know, scholarships and, and so on, grants. Uh, you have to be in that computer in order to get that money. Now, when does the FAFSA have to be in? Uh, the FAFSA has to be in for Californians um, by March 2nd. March 2nd is the date for uh, the Cal grants. Uh, if you, you can't apply for a, a Cal grant after March 2nd. Yeah, so we're, we're coming up, uh, <laughs> people, by the time they see the show, they have a pretty short time to get the form in. Right. If, um, having said that, if, if, if it is a family, which is a higher income family, that they're only going to get the, the student loans, they can file the FAFSA later. But in order to, to, uh, uh, to get the benefits, at, at some point they have to file before, before um, you know, accepting the offer at the college. Okay. We're just about out of time. There is one point, I think, uh, that I learned uh, when my kids were going through this process, and that is this is one time you don't want to do usually an extension for your income tax return. That's uh, right, because yeah. it is based on the, what they call the base year, which for, for somebody, a child going to college in 2000, uh, September of 2010, is the base year is 2009. So that means you have to file your 2009 taxes. Okay, folks, we're all out of time. So, uh, David, thank you very much for being with me today. I appreciate it. Uh, important information. And, folks, I hope you can join us next time in our next episode of Financial Insider Weekly.